Foster. I need that after action report as soon as possible. Right away, sir. I don't know where things went wrong. We started out thinking we had it all under control. We tried to always plan for the unexpected. The problem is that life is chaotic. I don't know how to control that. What I do know is what happened and who it happened to. I guess I should start at the beginning. You know, I thought college would be a lot cooler than this, but it's like high school with no hallways or asshole jocks. Well, what did you think it would be like? Well, sexier, more mature, feeling of being free. To skip class, to meet new people every day, to walk a campus that spans an entire city. Doesn't that excite you? Not as much as this cafe being our lunchroom. <laughs> I wouldn't call this much of a lunchroom as um, a, a lunch cafe. What's the best cafe I've ever been in? <laughs> Hello? Understood. Right. Be there in a few minutes. I'll have a double cappuccino with a shot of espresso and a double chocolate brownie with fudge. What are you getting? Um, I was hoping for the cardboard pizza or maybe the meat surprise, but um, on second thought, I think I'll just have a latte and a cranberry muffin. Okay, I'll see what I can come out with. You okay? You seem distracted. It's really not here. It's David, isn't it? It's been hitting you again? No, that was only the one time. Never since. David just does things differently for the rest. He's a good guy with lots of problems. You no, know, you could leave him. There are lots of guys that would kill to go out with you. No, David is a good person. He just needs to find a job with some stability in his life. That's what I offer him, just stability. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll back off. Here's some chocolate cake you need for that order. The thought of high school is depressing. While college isn't much different, not having the jocks bother me has been awesome. So what's your next class? I have econ. And then I'm free till morning. You were offered a full ride at Cornell, but you ended up at VCU. I want that full shot at MIT. But they said I need to bolster my portfolio. And with all the extracurricular activities I did, I thought I'd be in MIT by now. So are the classes you're taking going to get you into MIT? Not really. What I'm relying on is that program I'm doing for my uncle. Please let me have that program, the things I could do with it. I could have Danny Larson locked up just for giving wedgies. That program is a special program I'm doing for my uncle. No way am I letting you have it. Besides, you almost got arrested for hacking the school scoreboard. But that was last spring. I've grown up a lot since then. You're right, it was just last spring. Here you go. Thank you.
So, is that going to be enough caffeine to last you the rest of the day? Probably not, but it'll get me to my next fix. Hey, isn't that our comp class teacher? They're called professors. Now, shh, not so loud. Hey, teach. I enjoyed your class today, but you listed the five points of relational database theory incorrectly. Please forgive him. He's been known to have fits of Tourette's. What's with you? You're all giddy and beaming. Shut up, Alvin. Alvin Foster, is it? How did you know my last name? Well, you are a student of mine. The university has made it apparent that as a professor, I must know all my students as well as possible. Of course, to increase your chances in passing my class. I also remember you when I called roll today. So you've decided to correct something that I taught you? Uh, well, I meant no harm. I mean, it was a simple mistake, really. I was just wanted to make sure that you knit. Crap, does this mean I'm going to fail? <laughs> no, most likely it means that you're going to be one of the top students in my class. And then I might have to check my facts before I lecture. Or maybe I should stop using that con to find out who the top students will be in the semester. Hey, Susan, get over here. She's working now, David. She'll talk to you when she has a chance. Shut up! You've ruined things already enough with your metrosexual feminist crap! Okay, come outside. You said you were going to pay the tickets off. I gotta be able to drive my car. I asked you to do one simple thing, and you can't even do that right. You are so worthless! But he didn't have that money. I'm getting paid today, and I was hoping that the tips would take care of all the tickets, plus the insurance. You didn't pay the insurance? You stupid, worthless bitch! What were you thinking? I mean, what is going on in this look, mind of yours? Look, man, we've got a business here. She said she'd get it paid. I'll make sure she has the money. Look, you faggot. I don't care if you give her the money or if you sell her body for it. Get it done! Or she'll help me, you will spend the rest of your life alone! All I would need is his search or his license number. I would so pwn his ass. Alvin, stop talking like that. You promised your folks you'd stay out of trouble. Just forget it, please. Excuse me. I don't mean to make this worse, but it seems the young man just hit my car as he left. Okay. Uh, normally I would overlook this, but it's a car that's used by the university. May have to pay and never be issued a car again. All I need is your friend's policy number, and then I can just leave you alone. Okay, I have the bill on my bag. I will get it. Okay. Uh, any chance you know the license plate number of the vehicle also? I have it on the insurance bill. I'll write it down for you. Is there anything else? No, just this. Okay. Thank you very much. Certainly. Take some advice. Leave him. Leave him quick and fast. Don't look back. Alvin, here's that information we were discussing. Carpe diem, as I said. I'll be seeing you two in class. First assignment is the journal. What comes with this? What the hell? What does he mean by that? I don't know. I think I get it. I got a plan. Desk jockey one. The desk jockey comment? Uh, no, I mean, people in this case are just getting my nerves a bit. Uh, well, Jackson does love if that makes you feel any better. Okay. Wonderful. He only does that when he wants something. Anyway, the new images in the report on the CD. So how, are they get, so how are they getting on your nerves? You know, it's not like I've never dealt with people. Uh, I'd rather not or anything. But the guy and his kitty friends are just really getting to me for some reason. With the primary, you know why I don't like it. These kids, though, talk half the time about, you know, how cool they are and how leet they are. And the other half the time, they're just pissing and moaning about how evil the jocks were when they were in high school. I hated those jocks. They were a pain. What? I should have known you'd take their side. Anyway, they whine. It bugs me. I'll get over it and get the job done. Oh, uh, tell Jack that I think this thing's going to move forward a lot faster than we thought. 
with the primary recruiting these kids. He's obviously got something else planned, and it's just going to get bigger the longer we let it roll. Understood. It's like the last time with that guy. Uh, oh, some intel for you. Us dust jockeys, we believe there's another player on the field. So keep that in mind as this goes on. Always. So yeah, don't have too much fun out there. Hey, how are you today? Good, you seem to be in a better mood. Sure am, things seem to have cleared up. I can go ahead and take your order, but then I'm gonna have to leave. Kevin can bring it out to you. All right, happy for you. I'll take coffee, black, three sugars. Black, three sugars. You order the same thing every day, very predictable. Well, I'll go ahead and give this to Kevin, he'll bring it out for you. You have a good day. Here's that guy's order, then. But I'm gonna go ahead and get going. Okay, thanks. Hey, are we still on for another? Sure, I'll see you later. Okay, thanks. It's Professor Bauer! Arm and Bauer sitting in a tree. Shut up, Alvin! Let's go sit by him. Fine. You two seem very happy today. We're having a good day. We seem to have won over one of our professors. I wouldn't trust your perceptions as much as you seem to be. Remember, people do pretend to like others in order to get something from them. And you're one of these people? Well, one class isn't enough to make a proper judgment. Okay, enough chit-chat. How did you help the waitress? Are you sure it was something we did? Okay, fair enough. I did jump to a conclusion there. My perceptions led me to that. We only have a half an hour until your next class, and we don't meet again until next week. So spill it. Well, we did start the ball rolling, but it was all to be a slow burn. Here's your coffee, sir. Oh, and thanks for the advice you gave my friend. So she took my words of wisdom and left that guy? Well, she has left him, but something else happened to make her want to get away from him. So if you were to delve into the story, what would it sound like? Well, it's really crazy. I mean, of course, he hit your car and you reported to the insurance company, and of course his insurance was canceled or not paid for. And, uh, and then, like a few days later, his car's getting repoed. Uh, and so he gets into a, a scuffle with the uh, with the repo guys, threatening him and going off. And so the repo guy splits, goes and gets the cops. The cops come back and they they you know they start looking up stuff on this guy. And he's he's got priors on assault. He's got his license is revoked. He's got all this stuff going on. It's just nuts. So I don't know, but I mean, it just it tore him up. So he's gonna be tied up in courts forever. Sounds like he had it coming. Yeah, I mean, I don't believe in coincidence. I guess his bad karma caught up to him. Y'all have a good day. How did you pull all that off? Well, the assault in the priors weren't our doing. I mean, the guy's already a jackass. I guess his assault in the tow truck guy sped things up. Okay. Well, I've been working on this special program for my uncle for private detectives, bounty hunters, and repo men. My uncle's program was always buggy and problematic, so about a month ago I promised I'd look at the code and see what I could do to improve it. Everything I did made it a better program, but it caused big security holes in all the systems that went into. So I've been working to fix these problems. She found a way to make the program not only be a database viewer, but a remote editor. You still had to have access code like login and password, but that's easy enough to get using egg dropping some keystrokes off some noob. So we like saw that. he had like a bunch of tickets, and usually that would flag him to lose his license. So all we did is speed the process up. We flagged him for instant revocation. Next part we did as an afterthought. He had a loan on his car, and we noticed it had gone to delinquency several times with no repossession being called for. So I used his account information that I got using an egg drop and just basically stopped the payment on his loan. So without knowing how he'd react, you set him up. What you subconsciously did is to set him up to become violent, which is how he reacts to life in general. He should have a hard time drawing a line back to the waitress. She wasn't in charge of his loan or responsible for his overdue tickets. How do you feel about the outcome? At first, I was uncomfortable doing anything illegal. But, you know, as we did it, I kept remembering that guy and how violent he was towards Susan. I just couldn't believe it went through so fast. Fast? 
You set the wheels in motion. The only result that could have happened was explosive. Good read, both of you. Yeah, it felt good. I mean, I've hacked a lot, and I mean a lot. But nothing I've ever done has led to something like this. And if something else were to come up like this, would you be willing to help? Let's not get too used to this. It's still illegal. I mean, I really like helping somebody out, but I'm not sure. Hell yeah.